Hey, what's up guys? So if you've been running any one of the many different radar detector apps for your phone, Android or iOS, but then you get a new phone, let's take a look at how you can transfer all the data over from the old one to the new one. That way, in case you've customized all the different settings in the apps or uh, you've built custom profiles for your detectors in the apps or the apps have been uh, basically building GPS lockouts that apply to your detector as well, not just the ones in the detector, or uh, you've been basically logging all the different alerts that you drive, well, all that information is stored on your phone, but how do we get that information over here to the new phone? Now, there's a variety of different ways to do this depending on what app that you're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through uh, the process here for a variety of different apps. And I'll put the list here on screen of the different apps that we're gonna be talking about along with the different timestamps for how you're gonna be doing this. Now, the reason that we're gonna be doing this is because, well, I just got a new phone. Uh, I've been wanting to upgrade my older Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, and I just picked up the newer S25. There's a lot of new phones that are now available. There's like the S25 here, for example. Samsung also recently released the S25 Plus, which has a bigger display. And then for some more affordable options, they've also got phones like the A36, as well as the A26. And down in the video description, I'm gonna to link to not only all the different phones, but all the different apps that we're gonna be talking about as well. Now, as far as the way that you can actually do this backup and restore, there's a couple different ways to do it. Now, on both Android and iOS, they give you the ability to take all the information from the old phone and basically clone it over to the new phone. And a lot of times, this will actually do the trick, so that'll be the place to start. However, I do find that your results might vary. Uh, for example, depending on what phone you're using or how you actually do the clone process, uh, or if it's Android or iOS, the results may vary. Additionally, sometimes it'll copy the apps over, but not all the information within the apps. And so for that reason, uh, start with kind of the phone's cloning process, of course, when you're upgrading to a new phone. But in case that doesn't do everything that you need, or maybe you're just starting from scratch and you're just kind of like starting with the new phone and installing all of your new apps fresh, let's take a look at how you can uh, basically copy all the information from within each of these apps. Uh, over to the new phone. And the process for doing this is actually gonna be pretty similar with a lot of the different apps. You're basically taking a lot of the information and you're gonna be copying it up to the cloud and then restoring it onto the newer phone from the cloud. On Android, a lot of times you'll back up to the Google Cloud, while on iOS, you'll back up to Apple's iCloud. Additionally, some apps kind of have their own cloud and their own process for how you can back up and restore the data. So we'll go ahead and walk through the process here uh, for all of these different apps. <laughs> Now let's begin here first with JBV1. This is the main app that I run here uh, in my car. I actually have a dedicated phone in my car uh, just to run this either in standalone mode here like this, you can see standalone mode, or if I'm running it with the V1, I compare it to the V1 as well. Now, as far as the backup stuff, this is actually pretty straightforward. There is a feature that's built in here to the app. You can see right there for backup and restore. So we'll go ahead and pull this up here uh, on both of them. We are gonna wanna make sure that we're signed into our Google Cloud. You can see that I've uh, signed in here on both phones. And then on our old phone, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're backing up our settings here in the app, as well as the database. And then uh, we're gonna wanna select Drive. So uploading to the Google Drive in the cloud, uh, not locally here on the phone. So. Uh, we'll just do this and then we're gonna hit uh, backup like this, back up to Google Drive, we'll hit okay. And then once the backup process finishes, you should be able to see the backup here stored in the cloud. Uh, if it doesn't show up, you can always hit the refresh button here like this and you can see now we've got the drive backups here uh, available on the new phone. And so we can just tap on this here like that and then we're gonna hit restore, restore from drive, we'll hit okay. And it's gonna go ahead and now start restoring the settings as well as the database uh, into the new version of JBV1. Hit OK, and then we can go back now and we can take a look. We've got our full alert log here and everything. Uh, I did notice that uh, when I did kind of the phone transfer from the old one to the new one, all the stuff did transfer uh, over properly, so that was good to see. But in case it doesn't, you do now have the option here to do all this kind of stuff. Some of the things like the permissions are not gonna transfer though. Uh, so you can see I've got my permissions activated here, so I am gonna wanna go in and like uh, enable some of this stuff as needed. And then once you've re-enabled everything, uh, you're good to go, and then you have uh, all your permissions here, just like before. I am curious to see if the downloads transfer over for like uh, the yep, aircraft notifications and stuff. Oh, no updates available. It looks like that does transfer over. I guess that's part of the database. So that's, that's cool to see. Next, let's pull up Highway Radar here. Uh, so I have noticed that with Highway Radar, a lot of the stuff kind of transfers over here just fine. You can see I've got a lot of the permissions, even the Sabre plugin, which I've previously downloaded and installed here, uh, also transferred over to the new phone. Um, but if needed, you can always go in here uh, and kind of reinstall stuff as needed. Now, the one thing that I wanna point out is actually, uh, if we go over into the settings and we go down here, you can see there's an option at the very bottom for settings, backup, and sharing. 
Now, in order to then access these settings here from the new phone, we're going to want to go back over to the older phone and take a look at the primary backup key. There's actually two different keys that it saves here. One is going to be for you that you're not going to want to share with anybody, which is why I'm blurring it out here on screen. The other one is going to be a sharing key that's read only that other people can't edit. And that's going to be nice in case maybe like you build some really cool settings or profiles for your area and you want to share them with other drivers in the area. Or maybe you go in the forum and somebody else is sharing their settings that you want to copy over to your copy of Highway Radar. You can use the sharing key. Uh, but for us, because we're going to be basically upgrading to a new phone, we want to go over here to the primary backup key and copy that over here to the new phone. And to do that, we're going to go over here to the new phone to replace current backup. We'll tap on that and then we're going to type in the private key from the first phone. Then once you do that, we just tap OK. And as you can see, backup successfully replaced. Uh, and now we have the settings here from the old phone copied over here to the new one. Next, let's take a look at the process here for some of the different iOS apps. And we'll start here first with the different radar companion apps. Uh, and the process is going to be the same for all the different versions of the apps. Additionally, if you want to copy the settings, if you've got maybe multiple detectors, like you have an R4 and an R8, you can actually copy the settings and the lockouts and stuff from one uh, app to the other. Let's take a look at what that process is like. We'll start here first with R9 Companion. And again, the process here is going to be the same with all the different apps. Uh, we'll then tap on Map. And then at the bottom, we've got an option right there for backup. So we're going to tap on this. And as you can see, we've got a couple different options for what we want to have backed up. I typically like doing things like back up the spot locks, which are like your GPS lockouts, for example, uh, and you know, back up your alerts. So like the different alerts, radar and laser alerts, uh, those will actually be logged here on screen as well. And as you can see now, I've basically uh, backed up all my information here to the Apple iCloud, and then we'll hit OK. You can see uh, it's got like 316 GPS lockouts, for example, and it can also apply those lockouts to the R9 uh, if needed, if the unit detector is not actually doing the lockouts on its own. Now, if I switch over here to R8 Companion, I actually want to show you the process here for restoring those settings here to this version of the app. We'll again tap on Map. And then over here, you can see that I've also got some GPS lockouts that it's been creating while I've been running with my R8. But what if I want to actually restore all the information from the R9, which I've been running more than the R8, uh, over to the R8 itself? Well, for this, I can actually hit Restore like this. And I'm going to say Restore All Map Data. And so right now, I've got 227 GPS lockouts. And if I restore all the data, you're going to see that now it's going to go up to 316 GPS lockouts. So now it's basically copied all the stuff over from the R9 version of the app to the R8 version of the app. And then, of course, if you've got just one uh, app that you're running, you can, of course, back up and restore as needed, just like you would do like normal. Next, we can take a look at V1 Driver, which actually supports a bunch of different detectors. It supports the Valentine 1, of course, V1 Driver. Uh, but if we go over here into the Bluetooth settings, it also supports uh, the different Uniden detectors with Bluetooth, as well as the Redenso DS1, which you can see I've got turned on right there. You turn it off if you're using the V1, turn it on if you're using a Uniden or Redenso. Anyways, if we go back over here, we've got an option for iCloud right there. So you can see right there, boom, we've got the option to back up our settings uh, and our lockouts and whatnot to the Apple iCloud. So we'll go ahead and tap that. Uh, do you want to back up your database to the iCloud drive? We'll hit yes. Uh, and then boom, it backs everything up. Uh, and then we just hit OK. Uh, my last backup was a while ago, so it's good that I actually did this. I don't actually run V1 driver as much. I usually do the radar companion apps. But as you can see, there's the process here for backing up. And you can also restore from the cloud if you like as well. I can show you that. We'll hit restore. And then there you go. It restores uh, all the information as well. Now, it's also worth noting that V1 Driver is also available on Android as well. Uh, it kind of gets overlooked because we're usually focusing on JBV1 or High Ray Radar or something, uh, but it is available here. And backing up and restoring is going to basically be the same process. So we'll go over here, uh, and you can see we've got our Cloud and Reset options, Cloud and Reset options. So we can go over from the old phone. Uh, we can do Backup to Google Drive. We'll pull up over there. And then over on this side, we can do Restore from Google Drive. Next, we can take a look at Escort's Drive Smarter app. And for this one, you'll just want to log into your uh, Drive Smarter account. And then once you do that, you're going to be able to go take a look. And you can see all of your devices, for example. These will all transfer over from the old phone. Uh, so you've got access to all of your detectors here like this. Uh, the GPS lockouts and stuff will not transfer over. Those are only stored uh, in the detector, not in the app. But at least you do have uh, this stuff that transfers over here like this. And so you're not going to have to like manually uh, repair everything. And actually, I'm not totally confident about that. I have noticed that uh, with a lot of escort detectors, particularly after a firmware update, uh, I usually do it on iOS, but you're going to have to like delete the detector out of here and out of the Bluetooth settings and then like repair it. So let's close it here on this phone uh, and then we'll try to connect over here with the new one. We can try to connect to the Redline 360C, but it looks like that's not working. We might actually have to delete it and restore. And then we'll go back to, I guess not restore, but set it up as a new device. We'll have to scan here. 
There's the Redline 360C. You can move the cable real quick, uh, continue. And actually speaking of which, you may have to do something similar with some of the other detectors as well. I haven't tested this specifically with you know every Android and every iOS phone to see if you have to uh, repair here like this, but you may have to do that again, depending on how the cloning process works, how the restoration process works, uh, what information is copied over. You can see like it recognized the device, but it didn't have the Bluetooth pairing. So again, this process may uh, vary uh, from one setup to another. Now it's also worth noting that if you want to back up and restore your GPS lockouts from one detector to another, you can actually do that here with Escort Detector Tools. I haven't ever actually tested or used this feature, but if you're in the Detector Tools app with the detector plugged into your computer, if you go to the advanced options, there's gonna be an option here for save locations. And this will actually give you the option to save the GPS lockouts as a file to your computer. However, testing it now actually for the first time, it does look like it's erroring out for me, but it looks like it at least should have the capability of backing up your GPS lockouts and your uh, manual GPS marked locations as well. So hopefully it works for you. You can always try it in the app, um, but there's just a quick note about that functionality. And so as you can see, a lot of these different apps actually have built-in features to let you back up the different settings and lockouts and whatnot uh, from an original phone and then later copy them over to a newer phone, which is helpful if you're upgrading or you lose your phone or whatever else. They all kind of work the same where they're taking all this information and backing it up to the cloud and then let you later restore it onto the new phone, though the process may vary a little bit from one phone to another or one app to another, but that's kind of the general idea here uh, with all of these different apps. Uh, other than that, if you happen to run into any issues with doing this update process, the best place to go for tech support is actually gonna be over on the Radar Detector forums. There's a lot of people, myself included, who hang out there. Uh, we just kind of chat about this stuff all day long. So that's actually the best place to go in case you encounter any issues. But fundamentally, the process is basically just log into your cloud service, back up from one app, uh, and then restore on the other. Anyways, that's it for now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing great, and I'll see you in the next one.